We're looking at the Beatitudes this morning, um, and I refer to them in this message as the declarations of God's love. And I have a list of them up here if you want, that you can have after this morning. But that's what they are. They're declarations given to us by Jesus himself um, of God's love for us. So I, I looked up what the word means because it's a weird word. We don't hear that word used. Do you ever hear that word come up in any conversations that don't have anything to do with Jesus' Sermon on the Mountain? Right? I've never heard that word outside of that context. So any of the declarations of blessedness made by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And that's what they are, all right? This is God blessing us, and this is Jesus telling us how we are blessed by God um, when we come into a relationship with him, right? When we spend time with God, when we draw close to him. There's a lot of things that we still have to face in life, even after we've done that. But there's rewards for that. For us not giving up and throwing up our hands when we are persecuted. Um, not giving up and, and crying, you know, uh, out and, and, well, we cry out, but we are still blessed as we deal with things that we'd rather not deal with. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much that you are here with us this morning. Father, I, I pray, Lord, that each person here recognizes your presence. As you speak to us, Father, help us to know that these words come from you, that they are for us, so that we might draw closer to you, that we might grow in our relationship with you. I thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you created us in this way, that we might know you, our creator, and that we might be able to seek you. We might be able to get beyond our old self and become the men that you've created us to be by transforming the way that we think and the way that we see each other and the way that we see you. So help me, Lord, now. Use me. Help me, Father, in my life. Speak to me the words that I need to hear. But also, Lord, use me in a way that you speak through me so that we all hear from you right now. And then give us the courage that it'll take to own what you're telling us because sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy. So help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're looking at verses 1 through 12 of Matthew chapter 5. One day as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. This is what he taught them. He taught them as he teaches us that God loves us and wants to bless us. That's what we get out of this. So. God helped us. He helped us by giving us his son, Jesus. And Jesus is helping us here in these Beatitudes, right, in all of the Sermon on the Mountain, uh, by giving us some much needed wisdom to follow. A lot of times we look to, to God's word for the wisdom that we need, right, that God speaks to us through his word. And I know my Bible doesn't have red letters. My other one does. But I love to read the words uh, of Jesus. And this is Jesus speaking to us. In verse 3 he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when I, I think of the poor in spirit, you know, when I, when I pray on Sunday mornings and when I pray in my own prayer time, I pray for those that are still, like, that are dealing with physical, mental or emotional, and spiritual afflictions. Because we all deal with spiritual issues. Um, I, I always like to refer to the disciples, right? They, they were there with Jesus. They, they walked with him. They talked with him. They watched him perform miracles. But yet in the end, they still had some spiritual afflictions in, in, in the sense that their faith wavered. And we all have issues with wavering faith, right? But it's what we do in those times. Do we give up or do we get on our knees and ask God for help? Do we start to blame God because something's not going our way? Or do we trust him even more, asking him for the courage to work through whatever it is we're working through and give us the wisdom that we need to be able to deal with it and the, and, and, and the strength, right? God blesses those, God, oh, God loves to help those that recognize that they have a spiritual, a serious spiritual problem and ask him for help, for their lives will be transformed from bad to good, from the living hell into the heaven here and now. That when we, again, face issues of faith, Issues of belief, right? What we believe. You know, I always like that one. There's a video out again. It's like much, everything I refer to is some illustration as I've seen in a video. But there's this guy asking another guy who he was, right? And he says, I believe, right? And the guy says, well, you don't know? There's a difference between believe and know. Right? Believe is a faith thing. But strong faith then would, I know. I, I know in my life, right, that after years of being in and out of program, that when I surrendered to God, I know that he changed me. It's not something I believe. I know it's, you know, I, I can see it in my own history. I know I've experienced that. So in my experience, I know that God transformed me from the old to the new. Um, and again, it, it, there's a lot of things that we believe. But to know is, is joy. To know is, brings peace. So, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn. Nobody wants to, right? For they will be comforted. And you know, I, I, when, when we look at mourn, when we look at mourn, Right? Of course, that is when we lose someone, especially a loved one, right? When somebody passes away, we mourn because that person is no longer with us. But after 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years for some, right, of living in a certain way, right, of relying on a substance, right, to change our, the way that we feel, right, removing all, not only the substances, but all those other behaviors and putting them behind us, you actually mourn through that, right? There's also relationships that we've separated and we've gone away from for good reasons. We mourn over that loss. So it's not just the loss of a loved one that we mourn. It's everything that was such a part of our lives that now have to be put behind us. There's a mourning process that we go through. So let me read this. God loves to help those that have come to the conclusion that all that was must pass. That they will have to die of self and become new. No matter how scary that might be, they will be comforted to face that fear. That is truth. It's one of the biggest fears that we face. Is And it is, right, when you look at it, the fear of the unknown it, encompasses all phobias and all fears, right? Because you don't know what's going to happen. So that is a huge thing that we face early in recovery because we don't know what God has for us. It's a huge fear that we face 
even when we're coming into a relationship with God because we don't know what he has in store for us. But if we trust, right, if we trust, we know that he has brought us to this point, we have surrendered self, that he's not going to give us anything that harms us. You hear me? He's not going to give us anything that harms us. Sometimes we have to deal with things that we'd rather not, right? And that's a learning experience. There's a big difference between trials and temptations. Temptations come from here, from self. Trials, a lot of times, come from God. And they're not necessarily something that he's making happen for us to deal with it. When we lose a loved one, it's not like he's taking away that loved one just so that we can learn from that experience. But he helps us to learn from those experiences. When we face these things, we can look at them and deal with them the way that he would have us to deal with them instead of the way we used to deal with them, by numbing it or pushing it down or acting like it didn't happen, those kind of things. We are comforted by God to face the fear that we have to, the, the sadness, the, the hurt, the things that we as people, as human beings, will have to face in life. So here's a big one, and I know I, I have a, a sermon that I preached on this a couple months back. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, when you look at meek, right, so us as guys, right, as men, we're like, I'm not meek, I'm a man, right? I'm a grown man. It doesn't, meek is not a weakness, right? So meekness, right, to be able to, to give comfort, to be able to, have empathy. Empathy. is meekness. To be able to care about somebody other than yourself. To be able to put somebody else's needs in front of yours. Or at least in line with yours. Is meekness. Not having to be the biggest, strongest, loudest, you know, hardest dude in the room. Yeah, it's meekness, but it's not weakness. Being able to handle a situation with compassion instead of punching somebody in the head is <laughs> not weakness, man. It takes a strong guy to be able to do that, especially if our whole life was set up in a way that we acted out, and that's our old way of dealing with things. Making those changes are not weakness. God loves those that are not too puffed up with false pride. Those that recognize their needs and the needs of others and aren't afraid to ask or to give help. Those that don't think of themselves better than anyone else or want more than they need because everything they need is theirs in Christ Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So one of the things I, I always say, and, and a lot of people don't understand it when I say it, is I, I like people that question. Uh, I'm trying to remember who said it, but it was a famous quote that, that we should question even the existence of God. And it's not that we question what he tells us to do, but we're seeking to know. We're seeking to learn. We're drawing, right? We're, we're building our, our, our information. We're building our knowledge of God by seeking. We should constantly seek. In everything that we do, we should acknowledge God and we should include him in all of our decision making. Right? Step back. A few words, Lord, help me deal with this situation. And then see how it works out. Because we're including God in every decision that we make. Right? But beyond that, we should spend time, of course, in his word. You know, I always laugh. And there's a lot of things I laugh about, you know, because I was in these places for a while. But it's always funny about, like, devotions. Do I got to go to devotion? No, you have to do. If you want to live, you have to do devotions. In the program, you have to go to devotions because it's part of the program. But you need to do, you have to have a devotional life, a personal devotional life. 
spending time in God's word and prayer and meditation of his word, right? Asking God for the information that you need. You're, you are trying to know God's will for your life. Another simple way of looking like, you know, of course we're not talking about self-righteous. That's the opposite. But when we look at what is righteous in God's eyes is what is right in God's eyes. Right? If we want to be righteous, we have to first seek to know what is right in God's eyes and then do that. But you have to participate in the relationship to know and to grow in that relationship, just like any other relationship. So we should want, we should hunger and thirst for nothing else but focusing on God, right? Focusing on God. Nothing should be more important than us focusing on God, seeking to know his will for our lives and, and the power to carry it out, of course, because it's not easy. God helps us when we seek when we thirst for him and his wisdom before all else. For when we seek him, we will find all that we have been looking for. Joy and peace, right? We, we think it comes from a label on our clothes or having other people think more of, our, more of us than we probably think of ourselves. But that's not what it is, man. That's not joy and peace. Joy and peace is being right in God's eyes. Us trying our best to be in line with his will and not our own. We should hunger and thirst for that above everything else. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now that's two verses but they're very close because we can't be merciful to others if we're not pure in heart. If we're still focusing on self, I came here by myself and I'm going to leave here by myself. I don't care about nobody else but myself. Well, you're still probably pretty hardened, right? You haven't really uh, dropped The walls that you have up around you that we build up because we've been hurt so many times. God loves to bless those who are not too proud. Those that recognize their needs and the needs of others and aren't afraid to ask or give help. Those that don't think of themselves better than anyone else or want more than they need. Does this all sound familiar? They see the needs of others just as important as their own needs. Through this, we will know true mercy. Their nature will change, and they will know unconditional love. They will know God's love. Every, you know, and, and, and you can sit there and break it down, right? So you look at your life, you look at your relationships, and, and you can say, no, well, I loved so-and-so, and I love so-and-so. I think as a child, and, and we're still innocent, right? Our love is pure. But as we grow, even those relationships where we feel that we love an individual, even a family member, they become a little one-sided. We kind of forget after we're, we've gone from infancy what, uh, unconditional love really is. But when we come into this relationship with God, it comes back. It comes back. We, we can see each other in a different light. We don't have to see people, you know, with us always going into a relationship thinking what we can get out of it. It's because we want to give into it. And that's how real, true love is. That's how true, real, loving relationships are. And that's how God sees us. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. We need more of these in this world. 
God loves to help us share his love with others. When we share with each other, our relationships grow. When we care about others and care for them, we are participating in a loving family relationship. We have entered into a loving family with God as our Father. <laughs> I just had another DC Talks song in my head. We all want to be loved, loved. We all just want a little respect. We all want to be loved. Tell me what's wrong with that. We all want to be loved. Again, I don't care how hard you think you know you are, how hard your heart is, the walls that you've built up. We all want to be loved. Blessed are those who persecute, <laughs> those are, that are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You guys probably point at each other. I'm sure there's guys in here that might point at somebody that's trying to do the right thing and say, look at that. I, I know people look at me that way. I, I know to this day that probably people that I grew up with that knew me as my old self. And we don't like that. We don't like that. Blessed are you when people insult you, right? Persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is our reward in heaven for in the same way they are persecuting the prophets who were before you. Rejoice and be glad. Nobody, nobody wants to be made fun of. Nobody wants to be pointed at. Nobody wants to be ridiculed. And when we are trying to be in line with God's will, and because being in line with God's will is not keeping it for ourselves, but also sharing it, we're going to say things that other people that, ooh, offends them. And they're going to act out and attack you. That's another thing, right? Just offend people today. They don't want to be offended. I get offended every day. You don't hear me whining. I might troll people <laughs> on Facebook, but I get offended every day because of my faith to some extent. I get offended every day even maybe here because of who I am. But I know, I know, right? It's not, I believe, I know that God is real. I know that God transformed me from the old self-centered, one-sided relationship person I was that had a lot of hate in his heart to someone that has no capacity for hate. I know that. I know that God took away my language, my anger, my hate. I know this. It wasn't something that I decided. The only thing I had to do, right, that song we also heard, right, was my will. My will is to follow God's will. The thing I know is that after years of trying to make changes and coming up short, when I surrendered to God, I know I was transformed. And the things that needed to be removed were removed. And the things that I had to work through, he helps me work through. Not helped. He did help me. But I'm still, to this day, and I always will be, working through things that I need to work through and grow from and learn from. God loves to help us share his love with others. When we share with each other, our relationships grow. 
We have entered into a loving family with God as our Father. Even when people say, yeah, <laughs> can you believe that? He believes that? A Bible thumper. I don't care because I know, I know who I was and I know who I am. God blesses us. God will always help us when we do his work. When we live in his will, we will never have to fear. I have concerns, but I, you know. Because he will see us through to completion. This life here will continue into heaven with him. God helps us to persevere when others try to tear us down. We can have joy in all things, knowing that God's wisdom, right, with, by God's wisdom, we can go in the right direction. By God's strength, we can endure. And by God's love, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Our place one day will be at home with him in heaven. These are the declarations of God's love. They're true. I know them. I don't just believe them. Amen? Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I pray, Father, for each person here that they know you, that they experience this transformation that comes when we surrender ourselves to you. Jesus promised, right? Jesus blesses us with this list that we can see, we can identify with, but we need to accept. We need to accept it as truth. So help us, Lord, in our seeking. Help us, Lord, first to continue to seek in all things because we continue to grow. But help us, Lord, in our seeking to believe. And then by believing, we accept. We, we accept your plan for our salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, so that we might come to you and surrender self and accept Christ. And then the Holy Spirit will come. And we will know. I pray, Lord, for each person here that they seek, that they believe enough to accept, and then as you speak to them through your word and through your Holy Spirit, they will know your love. They will know righteousness. Your will, not ours, be done. It's a simple saying. But it will be possible. And I pray, Lord, for each person that they know this as truth. That they accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior. Repentant of their old self, they come now, Lord, seeking you. They surrender self. Accepting Christ into their hearts, Father. You transform them. From old to new. So that as they seek. They not only believe. But they know truth. I thank you Father for that. I thank you Father for everyone that. Last week at, at, at retreat. Made this decision. I pray Lord that in their belief. They continue. To seek, to know it, that it's real, that it's true. And I, I pray, Lord, for each person here that has yet to, to, to make that decision. That you continue, that they seek, but that you continue to give them what they need to make their decisions. Again, Father, I thank you for all that you do for us. We don't have to live in pain and confusion, even when people attack us, when we are in line with your will. We will not only be able to work through it, but we will rise above it. When we deal with things of loss of life and things like that, Lord, we will mourn, but we will rise. We will learn from the experience, Father. 
Help us, Father, in all things to trust in you, to receive your blessings, the blessings that Jesus promised, because they are true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.